Well, I've been <clears throat> I've been working like a dog, and uh, some progress, uh, quite a lot of progress has been made. Uh, one of the things I've I've been doing because I want to be able to save and load um, the whatever I'm doing, the, the work that I'm doing. Uh, is uh, in inventing a, a kind of serialization uh, method, I guess. Uh, that wouldn't, it, it's not um, anything like pure, using some pure virtual everything derives from some basic class or anything like that. Uh, I've just invented a, a word called serialize. Okay that well, a class or a function or a anything could uh, uh, could use this word and um, the uh, point the the point of the serialized function is uh, to take data related to something anything it could be an integer and uh, to turn that data or append something, if in the case of, of saving, to a string, a TS string. So we have to be con we convert the data to a TS string and append it to the string. And in the loading case, uh, one would expect that the string being handed to you uh, starts out with the data formatted in the way that you decide uh, such that you can rebuild your whatever the thing is from, from the data so for instance um, I've only been working on uh, of, of my Things that I can do, like drawing dots and vectors and lines and so on. In fact, I can save and restore any anything now. Um, yeah, everything in, in my little world that I haven't implemented them except for uh, this particular one. What I've done is. Well, let me pull in the program first. So I can, this here area uh, is um, related to something called a construct that I've called a graph. Okay, that's this uh, an header file. Oops. Where are my numbers? Here are my members. Okay, there's something called a graph, and uh, that's one of it's funny. <laughs> its name is, in fact, the uh, uh, name of the structure graph. Now it's confused because um, there, there's something called a graph, and I shouldn't have given the, the variable the same name. <laughs> But anyway, they're they're in here. They're all defined in here. Uh, they're, it's, they're all derived from rectangle, and uh, one is a text control. So that's like uh, these things are uh, uh, graphical objects, a text control, and uh, another one. Is a line okay? So if I go into the edit mode, and I've got this little thing here, and I, I just what I did was I did Control Shift L that allows me to draw a line. And then that asks for a color, and I I can continue to draw lines of this color long as I like, or if I want to change the color, all I do is just do that again, and I can change to a new color. 
Okay. Now this uh, this is like a, a little substate of the editing state, the line drawing substate, if you will. <clears throat> uh, now. Um, now, one of the things about this substate is that it involves drawing points and lines, right? We'll take another color. Here I've got a collection of uh, lines and one point, right? That's fine. <clears throat> That's fine. There's, there's no problem with that. Except that um, if I went, if I wanted to now start doing something else, like drawing uh, a box or something, right? And that also involves uh, lines and dots. How do I tell? You know, how how can I tell what? You know which belongs to which that is um, maybe it's not critical but um, <clears throat> one of the things I, I do for instance is if I exit this edit mode I, I hide that stuff but if I turn it on again oh, well it will come back if I do something. Oh, I should have. I should be in forcing a redraw at that point. See, all all these all those things are still there, right? Now, uh, if I also had other types of objects uh, that weren't created uh, in this line drawing state. Um, I would like to be able to sort of view those as a diff diff different thing that, may, that I can hide and show. You know what I mean. It would be bad to say remove all all dots and all lines because because if I'm hiding, let's say uh, just just boxes or something, because then I would lose these ones. Anyway, that's irrelevant. That's totally irrelevant. Uh, the point uh, the point is that um, the way that I used the, the method I used to simplify that involved uh, group grouping the the sets of, of uh, graphical objects into uh, their own little groups. Uh, and then, um, then I don't get confused. I never get confused with what I should be erasing and what I should be keeping, and so on. But uh, one of the things, though, is that that serialize works for the, at least for the line. I can open up. Here's one I saved earlier. Okay, uh, and uh, it doesn't actually matter uh, at all. It doesn't matter at all um, the the format that that any of these things use in order to save themselves. You know, nothing needs to know about anything else. In fact, I can go into the edit mode here and start drawing lines. And dots, and you'll note that going out of that didn't just didn't destroy this. That's what I mean about things being separate, being separate groupings. So that could be useful if you, you, know, you want to draw just part of a uh, part of a. Or maybe if you have maybe you have a sine wave, right? And you want to do a bunch of demonstrations, 
but you want to keep the sine wave there and uh, <clears throat> maybe show a tangent line at one point and then at another point and having these things separated in different groups it makes that easier but the loading and the saving works okay. I'll just show you what's involved in saving I'll make a new thing all I can do is the line okay line. dim lines are um, I should go on full screen. Thin lines are thinner. I did that on purpose. Yeah. Okay. Now I want to put one point there. Wait. Now that point should remain, in fact. Green. Dot break green. Oh, I just ran over my point. Okay, another point. Uh, it's a, it's something I haven't used to do. Purple or something. Oh, it connected, I see. It connected with the last dot. Okay, that's fine. I can still put an extra dot. Now I say save. Oh, I, have to, I have to be in this. Right. Never mind, never mind that. I can still save this. And uh, we'll call it uh, second save. Okay. Now I actually print out the I've printed out here uh, what was saved. It was just a string, and that's the string that went into the into the file. Uh, Let's just see it actually in action. So the save starts here. If I do control S, no, I, this doesn't work. I don't know. But uh, I'll just show you what, what what's involved. Okay, so I bring this here. So now um, the only one I've implemented of the substates is the line drawing state. Okay, so serialize loading is false, and here's the string initially empty. And all it's going to do is fill up that string with the information required to rebuild whatever this thing. Uh, has sick, currently uh, remembered about it. it's it's what I've done in the line drawing substate. So go in here. If loading no. So now uh, it's just going to the graph object. Uh, all of these. Things uh, like the substates have uh, an associated group identifier. See this? Uh, this is generated once uh, when I enter one of these substates, and that identifies the graphical group wherein any edits I do in this substate go go there. So that's how I can recall those and make changes to. One group or another, or hide one group or another. Anyway, uh, I need to supply that identifier to uh, this graphics thing so we can find out which subgroup I'm saving. I'm not saving to a file, I'm just saving it to a string. 
Okay, so now we're in the graph. We're not loading. So now it is just going to attempt to find that group that identified by this string. And it will find it. So I won't go through that. It finds it. Okay, now here's the group. And here's what a group has. It has uh, function. It can have texts, p fun funks, uh, regular funks, point set, something called a point set. Uh, it has a name, an identifier, and that's it. So here's the save. First, uh, I want to save the name of the. This is a graphics group. It has a name, and uh, I want to save it. So I invented a, for TS string, I invented a function called serialize, uh, which has the property that it writes something to a string that can be used to retrieve it later on if it's in the right format. And I think it's, if it works one way, the, reversing the operation should also work. It kind of seems strange to save a string to a string, uh, <coughs> but uh, I have to save it, so I have to save it. Uh, I can show you the way that that's implemented. It doesn't matter. Nothing has to. Uh, follow a, a particular way of saving something, or it's independent of the method used to save and retrieve. For a string, what I do is uh, I get the length. Okay, now I have a function for saving an integer or loading. So I'm going to call my serialize int function. And, uh, that will either write the number to a file, I mean to a string, or retrieve a number from a string based on however it works. Okay, the way this one works is um, if it's loading, which it's not, it would string toke to a semicolon and then do a string scan for an integer. The opposite of that, that is uh, when saving, is to write, append to this string an integer value and then a semicolon. That way it will work properly in reverse. So our cur currently our string has the number 9 and a semicolon. Okay, now th is this thing doesn't care or ever worry about how this works. If that's independent. As long as it works in both directions, it's fine. Uh, all I know is that uh, at this point now I'm going to write my string out. And if I, if I am presented with a string that is in the format number, semicolon, and then string, I know that the next so many characters are my string. That's why I don't need any delimiter or anything for this for strings. And I don't want a delimiter for strings because the delimiter might be part of the string. So I don't put one in. Okay, uh, now I look now so our string looks like that. I'm going to now serialize the next string. So now our now our string looks like this. Okay. Are we loading? No, we're saving. Uh, so the method of saving a graphical group first is uh, points. I want to save off um, the number of what I call point sets. A point set is a collection of points and a color. Okay, but I want to first write out the number of point sets that I have, which is one. Okay, uh, so use the serialize hand for that. And now I'm going through uh, the point sets 
And uh, point set has invented a serialized function for itself to save and retrieve itself. You see how, how this sort of just naturally writes itself. It's hard at the beginning, but it gets easier and easier as you go along because if more things will have a serialized function, and it becomes easy to, to make serialized. So for a point set, which as I said, is just, well, it's a pen and an array of points. But a pen is just, it's just a color. That's all I care about. So uh, first, uh, first thing it does is it, uh, if it's writing, it writes out the number of points in the point set. So here's our struct now. The point set with one point. Uh, now I want to uh, save the color. Uh, now I have invented something called B color vector color. Thinking of a color as a point in three space with red, green, and blue from 0 to 255. And uh, I was using this for doing things like averaging, you know, or mixing colors. But it also comes in handy in this case because uh, I added a serialized function for V color. And the way that works, it's quite well, pretty obvious. Uh, in the writing state, it takes its color ref value and writes it out like in this format, hex six digit hex number with leading zeros. So it always has to be the same length, therefore reading oh followed by a semicolon. Therefore reading one back in is quite easy. Uh, I can you know I know it's going to look like that, so I can do a string code and then use mid to extract the red, green, blue values. As it is, our, our thing here is white, so the point is white. Now that's funny, it that seems wrong. So, Worked before, I might have messed something up. My pen, my pen became white. Oh, I know, but I, I messed everything up because I changed from full screen and everything. No problem, doesn't matter. It wasn't white, it was something else. Now I go through and uh, through the array and uh, yeah, I've added uh, for, for points. These are uh, D points. I uh, know oh, the regular points. Uh, what kind of points are they? They are oh no, they're D points, which have a serialized function. Which works this way. Okay, you, you see everything eventually uh, comes down to writing enough of these serialized functions that they do that, that can save everything quite easily. Uh, now for the functions, first uh, the count for. Uh, Function uh, Cartesian functions, uh, and then iterate through the functions, calling their associated serialized functions. Well, I don't have any of those, but I do have a lot of lines, and those are p functions. Uh, these ones, what I do is first uh, get the type name, i parametric line. And um, to write out its name, and then each function has a serialized member. This one's virtual because I don't know what type of function it might be. 
right now, and this is going to be white again over there. No, no, it's not white. Okay, well, the, this has a color, and the color was written out. Oh, yeah, that would be a little fun. Uh, then, uh, for this particular function, it has two, it has two points and two doubles, which is like three points. So, I took, I made use of the, uh, point serializing to do the range part. I put them in a point and use the serialize for, for D point that I've already written. So that saves me having to write another serial. Okay. Then I get to here and now I have this group may have text controls. Uh, you know, I, you know, I could have used my serialize int. But this this is the same it turns out and I don't have any text controls and it's done so I got a great big string uh, and that contains all the information necessary to redraw those lines and the one point that apparently is white if that worked then I go on to the save file name thing. Is that point white? No, it's not white. Not white. But I think we'll get the color it's okay. Let's see if it works with the colors. I mean the line colors, those seem to retain themselves. But probably because I changed from full screen and back, that caused a reinitialize of something. Yeah, see, so it changed the wrong color for that. Whatever, little bug, little bugs, easy to fix. Uh, now, I have serialized functions for all of my other functions, so I can implement the corresponding serializing. Uh, functions for these substates. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, so it's pretty good, and the, the grouping thing is good because uh, yeah, it helps me keep things uh, organized. Um, I might, for instance, have uh, groups of uh, uh, lines and dots that correspond to. Uh, what I'm currently working on, and um, another one uh, corresponding to what I'm editing in the editing state, maybe. You know, and I could go from one to the other. Uh, I don't know, but I'm sure that it it'll come in handy somehow. So that's one new thing that I can do, and what I want to add is. Um, here I have the various things I can. These things uh, require some editing, but I should be able. To, I'd like to be able to to um, add something predefined here, right? It's like a sine wave, so I might put a sub menu on here that would. Could come up with a bot with a, a list of things predefined things with a sine wave, and uh, maybe they'll ask it'll ask for a couple parameters for sine wave, uh, wavelength, amplitude, and phase. So the three numbers that you would want to put in. Uh, I might want to do log x or something, right? Or e to the x, things like that. Uh, and those, you know, those have two, one or two parameters you might set. Okay, but that that's not important. That's not really what I want this for. Anyway, I want to demonstrate the other thing. And I'm almost there. So this will be another random 
another one to the random chit chat. See ya.